Hey guys, Danny Johnson here. Just wanted to make a video about some of the common things you should know about the Terminator if you're considering buying one. Uh, I saw some videos like this that were floating around on some other cars I was considering for my wife and they were very helpful. So just wanted to point out some of the things uh, about the Terminator that you should know. Now, um, it's not a hate video at all and you know, keep in mind that uh, you know, every car is gonna have its issues and so I'm just talking about some of the general things that happen with these cars. May not happen to all of them. Um, some cars, maybe every one of these things happen. So uh, I'll also talk a little bit about uh, you know some of the components of it, of, of what you're getting and, and why it's a good thing as well. But uh, just wanted to make this video to be helpful for anybody who's considering buying a Terminator. And uh, so I hope you like it and let me know if you have any uh, comments or questions in the bottom. Uh, put it in the comments. Okay, first off, on the exterior, as uh, you may have seen from my video where I compared the Mach 1 to the Cobra, uh, the Cobra comes in certain colors for certain years. Some uh, colors are found on both years, and some colors are only found on 03, and some only on 04. So, color options should be uh, one of your first things if you're a big person on what color the car has to be. Uh, for me, I wanted Screaming Yellow, which was only 2004. Only 299 of them made for these uh, coupes, and so it was a little difficult for me to find it, but uh, color should be one of the first things. And I have a video I'll put in the description that talks about production numbers and colors. The next thing you should consider is the year. 2003 and 2004 were the only two years for the Terminator, and for the most part, the cars are pretty much identical. There's little minor things, you know, stupid little things, like, you know, the keyhole is silver on the 04s, and, you know, that kind of thing, and, and I have a video that I can also put in the link if you want to see that one too. It talks about a lot of the differences, but the main difference is going to be the cylinder heads here. 2003, for the most part, only had four threads for the spark plugs. Now, that's not a horrible thing. You just have to make sure that the spark plugs are always snug and torqued down properly. It's recommended, uh, my recommendation is to do that every oil change. In fact, the 03 and 04 Mach 1s share the same thing. The 03s had the four thread heads, and uh, I have an 03 Mach 1, and I've never had an issue with it, but you just have to make sure that the spark plug uh, threads are tight. Now, some of the later 2003 Mustangs did have the nine thread heads. A lot of the 10th anniversaries that were built last, some of them got away with it, so uh, that's something to keep in mind. But uh, anyway, cylinder head's kind of the main thing. You just want to make sure, um, if that's important to you, that you get the 2004, uh, which is what I did, and this has the nine thread uh, for the spark plugs. And uh, like I said, if you're keeping an eye on them, then you're most likely not going to have a problem. Uh, however, the next thing we should talk about is head tick. Uh, every uh, once in a while you'll hear about a Terminator that has uh, the head tick, and that was just the valve seats apparently uh, not being pressed in correctly and so you, you'll hear a ticking sound. Now, some of the good news about that is uh, basically by this point, uh, the car either has it or it doesn't. Um, maybe if you're buying a car that only has like 1,500 miles on it, then yeah, you, maybe you'll, you'll end up with one that uh, might develop it, but for the most part, you'll know if you had it, and only some of them were affected. It's typically, uh, I believe it was the driver's side uh, cylinder head that uh, was mainly causing those troubles. Uh, 2004s can also have that same problem, uh, but sounds like it was more common on the 03s. And uh, just to clarify as well, um, there's no cooling modifications that have made, been made to the 03 or 04s. That cooling modification for the cylinder heads came in the 05 revision, so uh, none of the factory cars would have that. And what I'm referring to on that, just something else you should know about the Cobras, is the coolant comes into the cylinder head and at the very back it comes to a, a, a plate or a, a freeze plug really where it can't circulate anymore. Passenger side it comes around, you can't really see it anyway, but basically uh, it comes out and that's where it goes into the car for the heater core so that when you turn on your heat you have heat and it comes back out. And so this side of the cylinder head has a way to circulate that coolant a little bit better where this side the coolant gets to the back of the cylinder head and uh, just basically stays there. Uh, another thing you should know um, on these cars is you can make big power very easily. Uh, this, this has an aftermarket supercharger on it 
and with uh, with just this supercharger, some upgraded fuel injectors, and a booster pump for the twin pumps that come stock on the car, you can easily make 600 horsepower just like this car. And uh, so it's very easy to make horsepower. Keep in mind though, when you're making a lot of horsepower and generating a lot of heat, you want to stay away from doing like fifth or sixth gear freeway pulls where you're just up in a high RPM for an extended a period of time, especially without uh, doing a modification. Okay, so just all in all, I mean, this is common for any car that's forced induction. You just want to be careful with it. Don't get it too hot and don't just keep beating on it um, or you're likely to have some issues. Um, another thing about Cobras is, you know, that supercharger creates a lot of heat. So it's a good idea to get one of these bigger expansion tanks for the intercooler system. This tank over here is specifically for just the intercooler. It's its own radiator system, just like the car has for the engine. Uh, so that's something good. Another point uh, on the terminators, common uh, thing to know, is that the alternators are somewhat in a, uh, a bad spot. Uh, it's right down here and it's close to the exhaust. Uh, you can see the bracket right there. Close to the exhaust and uh, the alternators that come with these cars are only the uh, 105 slash 110 amp version. It's actually the same alternator that comes on the V6 Mustangs of this year. So it's, uh, in my opinion, a very underpowered alternator, especially when you're dealing with twin fuel pumps factory and you know all these other accessories that you can uh, add on so easily on these cars. In fact, I've done the, the big three wire upgrade and a 240 amp Mechman alternator just you know to get away from that problem. Um, something else to know is with these cars, you're gonna wanna look for a, a stock lower pulley. Okay, I have an extra pulley bridge here and uh, basically this is the part that we we're just looking at, but these are the stock idlers. And uh, as, you, as you can see, you have a belt system for just the supercharger and the alternator. And then you have a secondary belt system inside there that's for the power steering, air conditioning, water pump, the rest of the accessories. But uh, what you wanna know is that when these bearings start to fail, it will actually explode uh, this uh, idler pulley and, uh, and cause some havoc. So people have had these explode. It's a, a better idea to get some aftermarket uh, idlers. And I even have a video on how to change these bearings when they start to go bad. Um, but uh, anyway, that's just uh, how superchargers are. You know, they have a lot of these extra idlers on there. So uh, that's something else to know. Okay, the next thing to know is that you are getting a very good engine. Uh, I'll post another link in the bottom. I have a video that I made called uh, Why the Terminator Engine is So Strong, and it goes into more detail here. But you are getting forged H-beam connecting rods, forged pistons by a company called Zollner, and a forged 8-bolt crank by uh, Kellogg. So you have a very nice rotating assembly with these. Uh, one of the things people talk about often are the pistons. And um, honestly, they do the trick and they do just fine. I think a lot of people blame them a little too often because when there is an issue with the pre-ignition or the car running lean, I mean, the piston's gonna take the brunt of that. So, I mean, you can melt pistons and when you see a piston that's been melted on the side and when you see chunks out of the top of it, it's not the piston itself, but it's more, you know, pre-ignition from the fuel igniting. It's too much ignition timing causing pre-ignition it's running the car too lean. So, you know, a lot of people blame the pistons, but they're forged and they're actually a pretty good uh, forged piston. Could they be better? Yeah, out of how good the rest of these parts are, it's probably, um, you know, the weaker link. But uh, at the same time, uh, people have run 1100 horsepower out of this factory, you know, uh, short block here and uh, even the long block. So. Um, anyway, that's something else to know is that you're getting a very good uh, engine. This car, uh, this crank that's out of this car was uh, from a red Cobra that we had and it melted a piston, lost an alternator, went lean. Um, but the point is we tore down the rest of the engine and you know it was great. You didn't have any rod bearing failures, you didn't have uh, many issues like that at all. So you are getting a very good solid engine.
One thing you may want to consider is the stock crank pulley, okay? So uh, this, this car has a supercharger, it has a belt system for just the supercharger and the alternator, and then an inner belt for the power steering, air conditioning, water pump, that kind of thing. Now, it's very common to switch out this, uh, this lower uh, pulley uh, in order to get different boost levels. You can very easily make the pulley bigger and run more boost, uh, the alternative is to make the supercharger pulley smaller to run more boost. Uh, just know, however, that this stock um, pulley is caged. If you can see, it has you know this bracket that's built into it to hold it still. So you have a lot of support on the crankshaft. Now, when people go with aftermarket lowers on a stock uh, supercharger car, you're usually okay. The main thing you wanna watch out for is you go with a bigger, lower pulley, you're gonna overspin the alternator, so you want the alternator to have a bigger pulley upgrade as well. Usually 3.2 inch is the common one, where that'll slow it down enough, but still let it do its job. Um, but uh, I'm not saying that the lower crank pulleys uh, kits are, are all bad, but uh, if you're going with an aftermarket bigger, a supercharger, something like a 2.9 or the new 2650 probably on the TVS, um, or especially if you get into like a 3.4 liter Whipple or a 4 liter Whipple, then uh, you really want to be careful because uh, it's a lot of pressure on that crank and it can uh, it can mess up the bearings uh, on the on the crankshaft and the actual you know the actual replacement pulley is you know it's not as supported as this one so uh, just keep that in mind also while we're talking about this lower crank pulley know that it is very difficult to get off uh, in fact uh, it's a reverse thread and it's a 14 millimeter <laughs> allen type hex thing here here it is right here you can see this one's got some use from a, a friends that i had removed and I'll put that video in the description as well. But uh, like I said, it's reverse thread, very difficult to get off. And uh, in order to change this inner belt, you have to take that off. Uh, with that cage system that's going through there, you can uh, loosen up that inner belt, but it will not come off because this uh, lower pulley cage is in the way, so you won't be able to get that belt off. So that's something that you definitely want to know uh, because uh, as you go to try to change that belt, you'll find out in a hurry that you're not going to be able to get it off without that lower crank uh, pulley. And uh, to get that off, uh, like I said, I'll put a video in this, the description of how I got it off of a different car. But you basically have to get a torch and heat the, uh, the bolt area up. And you're talking a huge breaker bar. And uh, to keep the crank from spinning, if the uh, you know the engine's still in the car and all that, you got to put it like sixth gear, parking brake all the way up, and a big old cheater bar, you know that's you know coming down and and like I said, reverse set thread, so you're pushing downward on it as if you're tightening it to actually break it loose, and you have to have some serious leverage on that bad boy. So. Anyway, that's uh, just something that's a common thing to know. Also tensioners, here's a supercharger tensioner. This is a thump racing one, aftermarket big boy. And uh, that's a very good modification to have for these cars just so that you don't get belt slip. And I guess you might as well just talk about belt slip as well. You run too small of a pulley up here and the belt starts slipping. Uh, you'll see the chalk, you know, the black powder on the hood on the bottom side of that happening. That's kind of a telltale sign. Now, if the belt's slipping, it's not detrimental. You're just gonna not get as much boost for a minute or two as you're <laughs> under boost. Uh, and so, you know, the car will run more rich for a minute and uh, you won't get all the power out of it, but it's not gonna, you know, destroy the engine or anything like that. But uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Now, along these same lines, keep in mind that uh, it's a very well-built engine and you want to be careful when you're buying a car that it hasn't been abused to the point where you have hot spots forming on the pistons from running lean uh, because with it being such a strong engine it can take a lot of abuse and so maybe the engine hasn't completely failed but you do want to do a compression check if you can get a bore scope down in here and, and take a look at the condition of the pistons uh, you know that kind of thing uh, the engine itself is pretty low compression it's eight and a half to one, so uh, Ford did that for safety reasons, so um, it's, it's a good thing, but uh, higher compression would have led to more horsepower, but would have been a little more dangerous, so, you know, that's why it is what it is. 
but uh, it is a very solid uh, engine without uh, a lot of common problems. Okay, so the next thing to bring up is the independent rear suspension found on the Cobras. And I once again have a video on that, also that I'll put in the description if you want to have more information. But basically, as you can see here, the Mustangs came with the solid rear axle normally. Just a solid axle going through, exhaust goes up over the axle and out. Now on the Cobras, each side is independently operated and uh, it's called the independent rear suspension and so you still have that 8.8 .8 inch uh, rear end in the middle but coming out of the side you have half shafts now for each axle so um, for each axle shaft basically and so uh, what to know about that is you know, the solid rear is good for the track because the whole thing kind of stays solid independent rear suspension at uh, a drag strip if you launch the car hard and uh, you're getting some interesting traction issues, then you're going to get some wheel hop, which is where the wheels basically just bouncing up and down, and you get that on each side. So uh, the problem with that is that is what will snap an axle half shaft, um, is that harmonics and everything that's bouncing around. So um, you just want to be careful with these cars if you buy one. If you launch it hard and you feel it starting to wheel hop, get your foot out of it quick. Uh, otherwise you'll just snap that half shaft. Also, while we're talking about the independent rear suspension, know that it is very expensive. You're easy $800 in bushings alone and uh, you know easy $1,500 per half shaft if you're going with upgraded ones, that kind of thing. So just something, uh, just something to mention. Okay, something also that you want to be aware of and know this is a 36 millimeter socket. That's a big boy. The uh, half shafts on this IRS take uh, a, there's an axle nut on there that's 36 millimeter. And on the driver's side, just because of the way that the wheel's spinning, it will uh, sometimes self loosen. Uh, so, once again, this is something that you want to be checking as you're changing your oil or, you know, something routine maintenance kind of thing. You're going to want to get your hands on one of these bad boys and you're going to want to just make sure that the driver's side axle nut is solid. And so you just take the wheel off and then it's right there. I also have a video of uh, dismantling the IRS on the Cobra, so I'll put that link in the description as well. Okay, so let's talk about the six-speed manual transmission. T56. It's actually a very good transmission. Uh, I don't have any problems with it. A lot of people get along with it just fine. Obviously, if you're power shifting it like crazy and beating on it, then it'll most likely start to whine and, and make some noise. Um, but uh, in general, the six speed is a very good option, and it's uh, it's pretty good on this car. If you're going to a very high power level, then you'll want to switch out your input shaft from the 10 spline to a 26 spline. And uh, I have a link in the description showing how that is somewhat done, basically, as you're putting the new retainer sleeve on. Uh, clutch work is pretty normal on these cars. It's the same process as the other Mustangs. And just know that uh, when you get to that point, it's a good idea to upgrade it. And uh, it, it really isn't going to cost you a ton more money than what you would expect for parts. And uh, one of the common things with the Cobras, however, is the retainer sleeve that the throwout bearing rides on. And uh, I did a video on changing that out too, so I'll put that in the, in the description too. But uh, transmission-wise, you're pretty good. Okay, interior, generally speaking, you know, it's a Mustang, it's not a Bugatti, it's not <laughs> a Rolls Royce, okay, so you're getting a Mustang interior. And honestly, it doesn't bother me knowing what the car is and what it isn't. Uh, I think it's a very nice interior. Um, there's, I think it still looks good even for today's standards, and personally, I even like it better than the, the new Mustang's interior that's out right now. Now some good news about this car is it will be a great investment. The bad news is at this rate where they're getting a little bit older, you're pretty much going to have to either put this money out uh, in cash uh, or get a personal loan or something. But uh, in order to buy these cars, they're still demanding a good amount of money, but it's because they're holding their value so well. And from here, the values uh, really will not drop. They're just going to go up. 
Um, keep in mind though, you buy a car with 10,000 miles on it and put 90,000 on it, then obviously it's depreciating, you know, you're, you're not going to get as much out of it that way. But generally speaking, these cars are holding their value very well. So that's a good thing, even though it's going to take a little more uh, effort and a little bit money for you to buy one. They are becoming collector's items now and uh, the very good condition examples of them will still demand uh, a lot of money, but you'll be able to get that money back. Um, even and some in another you know 10 15 years so uh, just keep that in mind now one part that uh, co that commonly fails on these is the intercooler pump it's located in here behind uh, it's in the bumper right here behind the fender and I have a video on replacing that too they go out every 40,000 miles it's a Bosch part and you know if you do your research that's very similar setup on the Jaguars and you know a lot of other cars share a, a pretty similar setup and uh, it's just common with these electric pumps that every once in a while they fail so that's something you can do I'll, I can put a video on the link to a way of uh, bridging this relay over here even with the car off to, to make the pump run and to check it in the uh, intercooler expansion tank to make sure it's going but intercooler pumps are something uh, that can go out on these and uh, you know you'll notice some very high air intake temperatures um, discharge temperatures if you have a way of monitoring that and uh, you know some people have even had uh, some of the coolant boil out of here and it goes through the head vents and onto the windshield so um, but it's, it's not a catastrophic failure it's nothing that's uh, too serious I, you know I guess it could be if you keep running the car with it doing that but uh, yeah, the intercooler pump is uh, another thing you'll just want to keep an eye on. Something else I've noticed with these cars a lot more often than I would think is a lot of them have salvaged and rebuilt and even stolen, you know, theft recovery titles. Uh, I don't know what was going on if the cars were just, uh, you know, you're talking basically a 420 horsepower engine stock and easily a 500 horsepower engine with just a pulley. And we're talking at the crank but uh, you know these cars probably got away from people a lot more than they were expecting back in 03 and 04 and so uh, you know a lot of them were damaged a lot of them were wrecked uh, so you want to find one that has a clean title make sure it hasn't been title washed which is where basically you can sell the car in a certain state when you buy it in a different state it uh, doesn't have that salvage title follow it uh, and so it's called title washing. So anyway, you just want to watch out for uh, something like that and just make sure that the uh, the title is good and clean because uh, that will uh, definitely af affect the value pretty good. Now this is pretty obvious and kind of goes without saying, but you want to make sure that you have a really good pair of tires on the rear on these cars. Uh, and do know it's very common for people like me right here to put a drag radial tire on here and uh, if you look at this tread wear let's see if i can get that to zoom tread wear is triple zero that means this this tread is so soft you could scratch it with your fingernails in order to get power to the ground in this car and get traction i actually run it at uh, i've run these tires down at about 25 PSI they're you know a little on the flat side just in order to get power uh, But what I'm what I'm getting at with this is you're gonna have to run some of these tires if you want power all the time or You know be prepared for the car to feel like it's on the ice skates and you know skating around Because it is a lot of power to the rear wheels the independent rear suspension actually helps with that in my opinion on the street it squats pretty pretty good and uh, the car does pretty well, but if you're on regular street tires then uh, you're going to spin the rears quite often. Uh, in this case, this car, I, I only put a thousand miles on it a year basically, and so I can have nice drag radials on it and they're not going to you know, wear out too fast. Uh, but uh, it is something to be aware of, especially in the rain. Uh, if you have tires like this, uh, or even ones that are more you know, towards being a, an actual slick, keep in mind, that uh, you do not want a hydroplane and so uh, if you're driving them in the weather uh, you might even want to have a second set of tires that are more traditional because these are these are meant to get traction on dry surfaces and so uh, I have seen a lot of Cobras lost 
uh, hydroplaning and going off the road because they were on drag uh, radials or some tires that were, you know, even a little bit more uh, flat than these ones, and they hydroplaned. Some of the good news as well is, you know, with these cars, when you're getting a car that's older like this, a lot of these parts are just floating around on the aftermarket. Uh, you can pick them up um, used. I got this cat back for a great deal. It's a $700 cat back. But you know, even at that, when you compare this, your performance and these parts to other cars that are out there, these cars really aren't that expensive to, to modify. And uh, what I was trying to get at is a lot of these parts you can buy used on Facebook forum pages and you know other forums online. And so it's actually really good to have a car that's a little bit older like this. Also, anything that you need to know about this car has most likely been covered. Um, a lot of videos I have even will discuss the things that you'll need to do on this car. And so, uh, you know, it's very good in that way to have an older car because you go Googling, you know, a problem with a newer car, you might not find anything about it where these cars, everything basically that could have happened to this car or has happened, uh, you know, generally speaking, has been documented either online or, you know, on YouTube through videos. So that's another good, uh, good tip. So all in all with these cars, my best advice is that you spend some time with the one that you're going to buy. Uh, in fact, this one's a, a perfect example of that. Uh, like I said, it's screaming yellow, only $299 made. Uh, I was very hard pressed to even find one. And uh, I had one online that I was looking at that was back east and it had uh, you know the solid rear axle swapped into it, which is kind of a common thing. Uh, so I knew the car had seen the, the, uh, the drag strip quite often. And you know it had uh, it had a Whipple supercharger on it as well, but uh, a little bit bigger. It had the 2.9 on it, and, and uh, basically though the car had been raced really hard. And so when I found this car, what really stuck out to me on this was that it still had the stock clutch, stock half shafts, stock transmission. Uh, you know I drove the car; it was dead quiet and all gears. You know, beautiful transmission in it. Uh, I knew that it was a, a very well taken care of car. So with these cars, they were intended to have fun with. So a lot of people beat the heck out of them. So that's something that you want to you want to keep in mind. So something to mention that goes along the lines with that is a lot of these cars that are bone stock will actually sell for as much or even more than ones that have been modified. So just uh, when you see that and you think, well, why is this car selling for so much money when it's bone stock and no money's been put into it? It's because uh, in, a, in a way that may be better. Uh, if the car has the stock pulley on it and stock tune, it's you know never uh, been run too hard out of uh, what it was designed for, then uh, you'll then you know that can be uh, more desirable for other people. In general though, you're looking at a great car for its era. Uh, you're looking at an aged car that's aging. So you know keep that in mind. If one has sat too long where it only has a thousand miles on it, uh, it might not be a very good idea if uh, you know if the owner has started it up you know often and, and kept everything running then yes but just keep in mind if it's just sitting there with absolutely no miles and no indication that the engine's been run then you can have some uh, seals and everything that are drying out um, so you know you just have to really look at the car you can take it to a shop and have them look it over if you're not too familiar with it but uh, Anyway, in general, the cars are pretty solid. Every car has its issues, and this was in no way of a video trying to rip on on the car or you know anything like that, but just tell you just some of the things to expect. I appreciated it on some other videos I saw about other cars I was considering for my wife. And uh, so anyway, what you should know about these Terminators is they're good, solid cars. They're going to hold their value. And uh, you know, if you can find a good, clean example of one, then I'd recommend picking it up. It's uh, it's a great, it's really a, a great investment in a way because uh, there's very few cars out there you can buy that are that are not going to completely depreciate. So, anyway, uh, I know I missed a few things in this video, and uh, if you want to add something to it, go ahead and put it in the comments and tell me what your experiences has been. You know, buying one or if you're considering one, and uh, you know, just uh, let me know what you're thinking. Thanks for watching.